Hello there. Thanks for joining us. This is something new. I decided a couple of weeks ago that I was going to do something called Contribute. And the idea was uh, suggested by um, by Paul, who's on the who's on the line with us today. Paul Cress, all the way from North America. But um, before we get into that, I'll just explain what it is. Paul's suggestion was that uh, on WP Builds, what if we had people come on who have something that they would like to contribute, something that they're proud of, something that they've done that they thought was worthwhile, something that they can show. Uh, and the idea being really, over time, I get on the line with as many of you as I can, and you show something that you've achieved. In this particular case, it's nothing to do with WordPress, but you know, I expect a lot of you will want to show us your customizations for WordPress, some nifty little trick that you did with a theme or a plugin, or I don't know. But today um, we've got Paul Cress. Hi, Paul. Hello, hello. Good morning. Yeah, it's it's, it's not the morning. Oh, it's morning over here. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Paul's in uh, Paul's in Virginia, and he is an employee of a company which we're all familiar with, Adobe. And Adobe, it turns out, excuse my ignorance. I know that a lot of you designers out there will fall over yourselves and say, yes, of course this exists. But I didn't really know about it because Adobe have a product called um, XD, which is experience design. Is that right, Paul? Experience design? Yes. That's and Paul's just given me a quick run through of it. Like I say, I've never used it before, but what you can see on the screen at the moment is a, a little demo. Um, and Paul's just going to kind of show us some of the things that it does. And hopefully by the end of it, you'll you'll say to yourself, wow, that could be useful to me, or at least I'll lock that away in my memory. And then if, if the need arises in the future, I could use this. We should also say that although uh, Adobe have their Creative Cloud suite of products, this sits outside of that, um, and this is free. Uh, yeah. So it's an app that you download to your PC, Mac, whatever, and uh, totally free without without subscription or cost. Or maybe you need to sign up for an account. Is, do you need to get an account? Paul? Yes, you need an Adobe user ID. Okay, well that's not a big deal. Anyway, right. so Paul, hello. Yeah. Do you want to show us what your what your what your well what all this stuff on the screen is? What you've been trying to yeah. achieve with it? Yes. So Adobe XD is intended to do page mockups. Um, you might do wireframes and sitemaps and things like that. And then it lets you do a simple prototype of it as well. Uh, and the, this is the design screen that I'm in right now. And what I really like about it is this giant artboard where it just lets me throw out all my thoughts of a project onto it. And I'm not sure if this is actually intended um, by the team to be used this way, but that's how I've been doing it because mm -hmm. it just lets me do it. And so. I, in this particular one here, on, on this side here, I've actually got two different presentations going on that I had to deliver about this project. Uh, this is a style guide over here. These are some templates that I started to um, build out, and they were more wireframey. And let me kind of zoom in a little bit here. So I've got the desktop versions, a tablet version, and a phone version for okay. each of these templates. And then if I move down here, I started to apply more visual design to it, and then. Um, and not in any particular order. Also, I did this sitemap here too. Um, so this is all the pages within this site. And um, as you see, it started to get pretty big. And then over here, I did a summary of that sitemap, this, and then these are the user flows. So, um, so this, this tool allows you to essentially zoom in, zoom out to an incredible degree. So we're on like the 10,000 mile high version, looking at yes. something which at the minute is kind of unrecognizable. It just looks like colored rectangles and what have you. Yeah. But you can just zoom in, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going until some such things are really big. Now we've got to yeah. say that Paul's, Paul on this occasion is not going to zoom in like super close, um, potentially because some of these things might be works in progress that he's maybe not allowed to to discuss on this in this forum. But yeah, sh show us how it how it all works. Yeah, so you can um, create a new um, artboard that they call them artboards, and they're pre-done sizes. So I have some regular web sizes, some phone sizes, and so if I want to like click a thirteen by sixty-six, now I've got this new artboard, and it gives me some basic shapes. I can draw some squares, I can draw some circles. You know, nothing, nothing too crazy. But these are typical things on the web, right? They're yep, yep. generally round or squares. Um, some lines, you know, basic stuff like that. Um, what I like about it too is these will act as a mask. So if I had a, an 
image and I just drop it. Well, well, if I drop that image right into here from like the internet or another saved image, um, it'll automatically mask you to that shape. Okay. So that, oh, that nice. lets you do okay. mockups really right, quickly. Right, right. Um, um, it has a text tool. The text tool is not quite as robust as some of the other Adobe programs. I get frustrated when I'm using it because it's not quite like Illustrator, it's not quite like InDesign or Photoshop. Hmm. Um, but it does do text, and it lets you also adjust line height and uh, you know the kerning and all that stuff. So that's pretty cool. And then um, if you you can make the graphics that you're creating here are actually a vector. Um, it also has these align tools. Um, something I think is really cool is this repeat grid tool. Let me, let me show you this. Since a lot of the internet is repetitive and we get these shapes, say we want like this Pinterest type grid, while this is selected, I hit this repeat grid. And now this thing um, oh, yeah. yep. can be can go Oh, yeah, yeah, nice, nice. And, and, um, and so now if, if I had, I that could also contain multiple things. It could have text in the image and all that stuff in it. And then you just created this repeat grid of it and everything's already properly spaced. It's really nice. And then something you can do too is prototype these things. So this uh, lets you see when I click on something, it shows you if I'm going to tap or drag or voice. Actually, that's a new thing to voice. I've not used that yet. Um, it has the type of transition if it's going to look like an overlay or a pop up uh, modal kind of transition. Uh, you so can choose is, whichever artboard. Is prototype when the let's say you're handing this over and you want some sort of confirmation that this is a, this design is suitable. It mimics um, certain functionality of say mouse clicks and um, and what. Yes. You? Okay. Yes, that's that's it. Yeah. And you you choose the thing, and so if I if you look now now that I've done that, you'll see that it's gone to this screen over here. Ah, oh, so nice! Yeah, now yeah. Now that yeah. I'm over here on this screen, you can see that these ones are going to start to go over to that screen. And <laughs> oh, it gets real complicated. It does. <laughs> yeah, actually, you can get lost in this. Um, yeah. and, and then you hit the play button, and it'll start to um, render a, a preview, and it'll also give you a URL if you wanted to export this. Okay. Or this um, this design specs is relatively new also where it'll show you all it's kind of like a, a style guide um, but it's all CSS right which is kind of useful too um, so you can export it to a URL and then publish that URL stick the URL in an email send it off to your client and they'll be able to see um, presumably they'll go to the first page within that flow and then from there they can yes. click and go over it and, and in effect it's like a um, uh, how to, like a rendered version of a website with just images instead of text everything is a, a vector or a flattened image or something like that that's correct yeah yeah perfect. and it simulates the scrolling on a thing as well yep. um, it yeah it's pretty useful I mean, well one of the things that I'm noticing now when I look at it is that there's an awful lot of repetition, you know, for example, the color palette is consistent across all of the screens and what have you, is that easy to replicate? So for example, if you start with the mobile view and then yeah. you expand and do the iPad view, can you just sort of say, okay, turn this mobile view into something akin to a, oh. an iPad view. And then after that, show me something which is akin to a desktop view and all of the, the, the features will come across like the nav bar and the search menu and all of that kind of stuff. So I end up, you're able to make symbols. Um, yep. If I wanted to create something like, um, like all of this box, I could make something that was a symbol. I, I cr create that and say, make symbol. And now this thing will appear in my symbols box here. I have um, symbols that are saved. I have the different fonts and sizes as saved, the colors. And yep. so now, this will be your, a thing that I can just use at, on a screen if I want to click a new screen. Yep. And I want to use that particular symbol. I can drag it out. <sighs> so now I have that thing. And yep. um, they're global. So if um, in this case, which it, it, it is a navigation, so if all of a sudden we change the word of home to something else, uh, it'll update all of those. Ah, okay. So you make yeah. you make sort of templated parts, global rows and what have you, mm -hmm. and then you can um, adapt them. So if you were to change that on any other instance of that little, um, what did you call it? Uh, symbol? Symbols, yep. Um, it will update on all the other instances of that exact same symbol. 
That's true. Yes, within this okay. document, it won't affect any. You can re, you can like pull doc pull symbols from other documents. It won't affect those. Right. And, and w when you start out with this, does it begin with like a palette of sort of useful things, or do you basically Not have to really. begin your own journey with circles and squares and lines and build up your own stuff? So there are some XD UI kits. Um, if you look ah. online, there are some, and I found one um, for like Bootstrap, which I, I usually start with because it, yep. it's pretty minimalistic in its design. But it has the the grids and it has the buttons and the form fields and all that stuff already done. So that's a pretty yes. useful place to start, I think. When you're swapping between projects, let's say that you've handed this project off and you've saved it and what have you, and the clients accepted it. When you begin, that's amazing. Look at that. When you um when you begin uh, the next project, presumably there's a. The, I think you said there's the ability to sort of borrow aspects from that. So for example, if if you feel oh the menu is pretty much the same in this new project let's just steal that menu from that one yeah that old project but let's tweak the colors and you're off you're off to the races you can just do all that yes you just cut and paste something right here from here like right 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 so th it. I, I, have you got this kind of like down to a fine art now you know you've spent hours with it you can kind of do all the things that you need to do without really thinking and um connect things and make things work and export things how, how long did it take you to get up to speed do you think actually it was pretty fast i feel mm -hmm. like um could because i i worked there so i, I was yeah. aware of it when it came out i've been using it as they've added more features to it so i felt like i was growing my, my abilities were growing as it was growing too so mm -hmm. I think if you're new to the program, it's um, I think it's pretty intuitive. It's hard to say though because I've been using it for so long, mm. and, and all the Adobe products. Um, one thing I would mention too is if you, a lot of people, I think, maybe previously were using Photoshop to do uh, mockups. Mm -hmm. If you bring in a Photoshop file, it'll retain its layers, which is really handy because oh, yeah. that's one of the things that you'd you would be afraid that it might flatten it. Yes, but yes. each of these artboards contains um all the layers so like right now i'm on this one called home and it has all of these layers in it even groups um if you have groups within your layer um right, right, comp right. you know it'll retain all that as well um it's pretty cool yeah it looks really great so you're using it not just for kind of like site maps and um what have you you've got like user journeys you've got the you've got the branding palette guidelines and yeah. all of that in there maybe just sort of zoom in and show us what you do in there that was quite a yeah. nice one uh where are we so the site map the site uh the style guide here that, which is super uh, basic yeah, yeah but it's like i said in a recent podcast it's something that i just never like just that bit there, the color bit. I never yeah. bothered to write it down. And there yeah. it is. It's so simple. So now uh, I can click and you, on this and you'll see the hex codes and you can save these colors and reuse them around. And right, what, right. Once they're saved here, they become a simple. So that's a universal palette that you've got there that you can just drop into all the other instances and all of the blue menus could become green menus just by one one click, essentially. Yeah. It's great. So this is, let me just get this right. This is um, Adobe XD, which officially is called um, Experience Design. It's free from Adobe. You need an Adobe account. Paul Cress here, um, I, I guess he's sort of, I don't know if he's setting himself up as a bit of an expert, but I, I guess he's come on because he feels that he knows it. So um, <laughs> Paul, where, where can, if anybody's been intrigued by this and wants to like ask you a few questions, where where would they find you? Um, probably just email me. I'm um, Cybercress, um, like my last name, C-R-E-S-S, -S, at, at gmail.com. Okay, so um, that's C-Y-B-E-R-C-R-E-S-S -S at gmail.com. What I'll do is when I put yeah. this out, I will also create a little Facebook post link, and I'll, I'll tag okay. you in there. Um, but that's great. Adobe yeah. XD, um, get in touch with Paul and uh, yeah, let us know what you think. Uh, hopefully we'll do a few more of these. If this has interested you and you think, ah, oh, you know, I could do that. I could do what Paul just did. Then let me know. It's wpbuilds.com forward slash contribute. You can fill out a form there and, and we'll, we'll just get you on the on the line. Paul and I have known each other online for roughly half an hour now. And that's <laughs> it's been yeah, it's been good, hasn't it? I, yeah. No problems. Very nice. Thanks, Paul, for coming on. Um, yeah, thanks for and having me. It's been we'll cool. see you again soon. Okay.